here's one of my own questions that I'm curious about because you working in petroleum and oil, basically a major challenge for years and years that I've seen, including, I, I see this in big debates on the flood and informed evolutionists, they'll say, well, all of our fossil fuels, coal, oil, <laughs> natural gas, they're all formed by geologic processes. Uh, and because of this, they'll, they'll look to a specific process called basin modeling. Mm -hmm. And the, the, they'll say it has to do with uh, radiometric dating as well. But essentially, they'll say uh, finding the natural gas and, and oil requires deep time. Like it's, it's the assumptions of evolution and uniformitarian thinking that allows them to find oil and oil makes companies billions of dollars. And so, you know, that's the utility of evolution thinking. Um, but they'll say that the young earth creatious position can't do that same thing. Are you familiar with that point? And secondly, what would be a good way to address it, Ryan? Well, I'd be curious to know if they found as much oil as I have. So <laughs> <laughs> probably not. <laughs> the, the, that's it's, it's a rather silly argument because the time at which the absolute date absolutely matters zero when you're you're going out to find oil it's, it's a relative date as long as you have the relative date and you can map the different rock units in a relative sense who cares what the exact number is it really doesn't matter when it comes to oil there are two different kinds of oil okay there is terrestrial sourced oil and marine sourced oil and one comes from algae and the other comes from bacteria. So both of these oils come from a tremendous amount of algae and bacteria that has been buried along with the sediments, cooked at high pressures and temperatures and converted into hydrocarbons. If you think about it, you know, cellulose and sugar, these are all molecules composed of hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen, which another word for petroleum is hydrocarbons, right? So these are broken down biological molecules. And we know that they come from algae and bacteria. Well, what better model do you have for generating vast amounts of bacteria and algae than warm oceans from the breaking up of the fountains of the great deep filled with lots and lots of dead things i mean mm. that's that's where the oil came from it's the flood that's why we're not creating more of it it's not something that's happening today just like we're not forming fossils today you have to have very special very unique conditions in order to create oil and yeah relative dating will help you but just no need for millions of years at all again it's a, it's a rate thing right if you can bury it quickly and get it down and start cooking it right away you can decompose those biological molecules into oil very quickly. Okay, so it was, was more so just an assertion, not backed up by anything to continue saying, oh, well, we, we from the evolution's deep time starting point can make these predictions, yeah. know where the oil is, make money from it. So mm -hmm. are, are you basically saying as creationists, we could look to those ages or those sequences, relatively speaking, not in an absolute sense. And that is really enough to find the oil and benefit yeah. from it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, very good. And then the second part to your question, I or answer I appreciate because there's prominent old earth creationists mm -hmm. and they all agree that this challenge, which I'm about to put forth <laughs> is a precluding challenge. They like to say, as in it just makes young earth creation impossible. And they'll say, okay, we got all this oil, this natural gas, yeah. all this coal, but in light of how much plant material and algae and dead organisms it would require to even make all that, whether it's rapid or over a long time, in the past, in a young earth model, there simply just wouldn't be that, that many animals, that much plant material, that much algae to make all of that. What would be a, a good way to engage that challenge, Ryan? Okay, well, that's their assumption. I mean, that literally is a definition of assumption. Who's to say that there is no possibility that there wasn't more plant life at one point and that the earth wasn't warmer and had more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere to support more plant life maybe there was more land mass compared to ocean mass in which you know you could grow more or, or maybe you know these these swamps grew out like um 
the sphagnum, you know, peat swamps in the, the boreal forests up north, you know, they just kind of spread out over top of the water, you know. Eek. In fact, most of the photosynthesis on Earth today still happens in the oceans with plankton. So there's a lot of potential that before the flood, there was a lot more biological life going on. I think that's indicated in the fossil record. I mean, you've got yeah. these massive dinosaurs, mm. right? Herbivores. What did they eat? There had to have been a lot more vegetation for to sustain these massive beasts. So there's there's no reason at all to assume that in the past there was there was less vegetation, not enough to form coal seams. The data points to the exact opposite that there absolutely was. I find it interesting that these are their so-called best challenges. And like you said, they require a lot of assumptions. Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot of people I think confuse Ryan that at the flood we have two of every kind seven of some, mm -hmm. depending on how you interpret the seven and 14, but let's just say two of every kind, but at creation, it's not like God just created, you know, two dinosaurs, two dogs. I imagine he would have created populations of animals, you know, but the earth would be teeming with animals put into fully working and functional ecosystems. And so that pre-flood, and then you got a couple thousand years to vary and speciate and so on and so forth. So as you've said, there'd be more than enough life, organic life, yeah. Um, the earth would have been created probably 90% green. Maybe like you said, there'd be a lot more land mass then than there is today. And yeah, I think that's a good, and, and you've pointed out in your previous answer that oil, for example, could be produced rapidly as long as you have the right conditions. And coal as well. They can produce coal, coal very quickly in the lab under the right conditions. So you can do it naturally as well. So is this why some... And, and I enjoy reading the technical literature in the world of young earth creation. Some creation scientists have proposed these floating forests, which have been, uh, would have comprised a lot of vegetation, diverse creatures. Would that be one of the reasons perhaps that they, they, they invoke floating forests to provide more plant material, basically to, to make coal and oil and so on and so forth? Yeah, that into account for the, you know, thick deposits of coal that are found in marine environments, right? And so whether that was a living raft of a floating forest or whether that was more akin to what they saw in Spirit Lake after Mount St. Helens with all the lugs just blown out and floating in the in the lake, you know, either way, right? And, and probably both. This is one of those things where you, each individual location is going to have its own kind of unique you know, parameters and, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of room for very interesting, fascinating science to happen within the biblical model. There's a, there's a lot of space in between the lines of the historical record, right? To interpret what's going on.